Hello and welcome to another Zuzin session. How about that? Um, so looks like my recent Twitter shit post has blown up for whatever reason. So yeah, in a nutshell, um, the shit post is um, the following idea, right? You have this very obscure program, right? And if you try to compile it and run it, it uh, will essentially print hello world. So yeah, it's basically a very obfuscated hello world, right? And the basic idea is that uh, this um, number is a table of characters of the message. And this number is a sequence of indices um, of the characters within that table. And the whole process basically decodes the message, right? It iterates through all of the indices, looks up the indices in that table and just prints that characters, right? So, and in this video, I just wanted to like walk through my entire thought process on how I came up with that entire thing, uh, just to demonstrate that it's nothing particularly special, right? So um, I've used an auxiliary program, so I just basically wrote a simple helper to actually help me to generate those numbers. Right, uh, let's start with uh, a simple idea. We want to obscure uh, the printing of a message hello world as much as possible. Right, so here is the message. And uh, here, what we're doing, we're essentially just printing that message in a very unobscure manner, uh, right? And ev anyone can clearly see that this is a hello world, but this is kind of opposite of what we want, right? So main, um, so cc main.c, and let's just run this entire thing, and as you can see, it prints hello world. Right, so the first idea would be to actually build a table of uh, all of the unique characters within that message and then replace the characters with the indices within that table. So the usual trick of uh, gathering unique um, unique elements within the sequence is to build some sort of a histogram, right? So we know that we're using ASCII characters, so the values of ASCII characters range from I suppose zero to 150, uh, zero, from zero to 255, but it's not 100% true. I think they stop at 127. Um, yeah, yeah they, they do stop at 127, but as since character is a single byte, I think it's safe to assume that we're gonna have 256 of them. So, all right. So we're gonna have a little bit of waste, but it's 2021, a memory is cheap, all right? So there's no reason to, to worry about that. So, and how you build a histogram? So we need to iterate through each individual character of the message. Um, I suppose I need to first collect the size of the message. So I'm going to do strlen for the message. Now I know the size of it. I also probably need to include uh, the string.h. And uh, let's iterate through each individual character of the message. Message size. Uh, plus plus i, there we go. Right, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna basically take the character and treat it as an index within the histogram table. And uh, since the histogram table is um, initialized with zero, we're gonna increment it. And that will give us basically a table of how many times a particular character occurs within the message. So we're building a histogram. So uh, we wanna build like a string of, um, all of the characters that occur within the message and we want to ignore everything that is zero. So let's create something like a table. So we're definitely not going to have too many characters in here, right? So I think we can define a table capacity to be something around, um, I don't know, 64. Like 64 is definitely uh, going to be enough. And we're going to also initialize it with zero. And uh, let's also keep track of the size of the table, how many characters we put into that table. All right, after we build the histogram, we want to uh, iterate through each individual element of that histogram, right? So it's going to be 256, and uh, maybe it will be even better to... I, I cannot use size of histogram, right? Because that will give me um, 256 multiplied by 8, because it's a size of size t. So maybe it would be nice to also define something like uh, histogram capacity, right? So let's define capacities for all of them so we can refer to them a little bit later. Um, I have no idea why I'm talking like that. Uh, all right, so, and we don't care about anything 
uh, that is essentially zero. So we only care about the things that are greater than zero. So, and the thing, things that are greater than zero, we want to push them into the table. So we're going to do table. We're going to look at the end of the table and we're going to assign I, but we have to reinterpret it as a character. You see, we're using character as an index and now we're iterating through all of the characters. So if we want to push it to the table, we'll need to uh, cast it back to the character, right? So, and uh, after we pushed this thing into the table, we need to increment the size of the table. And there we go. We have everything in, in the table. So, and um, after that, I suppose we want to print uh, the table that we gathered. I think it's going to be very, very useful. So first of all, maybe it makes sense to print the message that we're trying to encode. Right, so this is going to be something like a uh, message. And do I want to print double quotes? I think I do want to print double quotes. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh my God, Emacs. Uh, so this is the message, right? And uh, here we're going to have the table, right? So here is our table. And here's an interesting thing. Uh, our table is not null terminated, which is not that big of a deal, I suppose, because you can always do something like this, right? So because we know that our table is big enough, so it's not going to be a problem. Uh, but of course, this is a very unsafe code because there is no boundary checks in here because we're not programming in Rust and stuff like that. Uh, we should feel bad about all of that. But unfortunately, I do not feel bad about that. I'm really sorry. Okay, and now we should be able to print the table. So did I put a new line in here? Yeah, I did, I did put a new line in here. Okay, so and let's try to recompile this entire thing. And there you go. Here is the original message and here is the table. Isn't it great? So I think I also want to wrap the uh, the table in uh, some sort of like a double quote to show the uh, the borders, right? Because you, you cannot clearly see that space is also part of the uh, of the table. And what's cool in here is that now uh, I should be able to put any message in here. So the quick brown uh, fox. Uh, jumps over the lazy dog. As far as I know, it will contain all of the characters, right? So it contains all of them. Uh, and yeah, it also distinguishes uh, capitalized and not capitalized, right? So as you can see, we're collecting all of the unique characters in here, but we want to kind of focus on hello world, right? We want to focus on hello world. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, I don't know, I want to kind of like indent everything. Um, I'm not sure how to do that so, because I don't like that they're not aligned properly. My OCD kicks in for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know why this is so important for me. Um, as far as I know, you probably should be able to like say the width of this entire string uh, and it will be padded with Oh, I don't remember because uh, in with numbers you can do something like that and it will be padded with spaces. But uh, for a string, right, for a string, let's say I want, I don't remember, C print F uh, pad string. Oh, I already Googled that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Oh my God. It's a dash and then uh, the width of the field. Oh, it's actually from the, oh, okay. So you put dash to actually pad it from the right, but because otherwise it's actually padded from the left. Uh, and uh, maybe how many characters do I want? So the hello world, the size of this entire thing is going to be 13 characters. Can I say that um, this entire thing is going to be 14 and this entire thing is going to be 14? Is, is that a thing I can do? I kind of um, think that I should have done that a little bit in here. I don't know. I think I'm wasting time already. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so a little bit of OCD. Anyway, so the next thing we want to do is essentially um, iterate through each individual character in here and convert it to a sequence of indices within that table, right? So that's what we want to do. So we'll need to actually uh, maybe, yeah, let's create another array, something like ADX uh, and this is going to be essentially, yeah, size t, uh, ADX capacity. And I don't think the ADX capacity is going to be that big. Maybe 64, another 64 is going to be fine. Uh, so now we also need to keep track of how many things we put into index, um, index array. 
and we can start uh, working on this entire stuff where we are iterating through each individual character in the message mm, and now we need to find that character within that table so that means we'll have to iterate the table as well right. This is not the most efficient way of doing that, but our table is like few characters, right? So there's nothing wrong with linear search if the amount of elements is very, very small. In, in our case, uh, if you take a look, uh, the amount of characters is like 10 characters. Like we can afford in 2021 to iterate linearly over 10 characters. Come on. Okay. So, um, and what we're going to do in here. So this is going to be a table size. Uh, and if uh, table j is equal to the message i to the character that means we found the index the index is j and we need to push that index into the index table so it's going to be uh, index uh, size uh, plus plus and we're going to put it in here there we go so we collected all of the indices in here so in the next thing we want to do probably we want to uh, print the indices is that how you spell indices in English? I don't know. So, and I suppose it's going to be a little bit tricky. All right. So, because we have to iterate through the elements of the index array and separate everything properly. So, we're going to iterate uh, like this ADX as Z plus plus I. All right. And what we're going to do in here, we're going to print. Uh, that index uh, ADX I but we also want to separate everything by commas right and if we do that in a naive way we're gonna have like a trailing comma at the end of the list which is not that bad I presume I don't think it's that bad uh, but it's a little bit annoying not gonna lie just a tiny bit annoying uh so let's remove all of this and what do we have in here here is the sequence of indices right so here is a sequence of indices and i think that the easiest way to get rid of this entire trading thing is to actually check if i is greater than zero only then uh print this thing otherwise just don't print anything right and there we go everything looks okay so here is the table and here is the indices what's funny is that you can actually take this table and take this indices and already come up with a pretty obscured hello world right so to make it look more like c i think i'm going to replace the brackets with curly braces right so that will help me to actually you know copy paste this entire stuff and let's already try to come up with the obscure hello world so this is already kind of a good basis for an obscure hello world, right? We didn't do much. We just um, accumulated the table and we just converted the indices um, accordingly, I suppose. All right, so what do we need in here? Uh, we need a table. So this one is going to be a const char table. And if I go here, so here is my table. And then uh, I, need to, I need to take the indices. And how many indices do I want uh, have in here? Maybe it doesn't matter because you can always compute the amount of indices as I want, right? And I'm going to iterate uh, through size of indices. But size of indices will give me the amount of elements multiplied by the size of the element. So to get the amount of elements, I need to divide it by the size of a single element, right? So that's what I need to do in here. Right, and then what I do, I just do, uh, do put char table um, idx i, and there we go. We've got ourselves what we didn't get anything. Uh, I think I need to do it like this. We got ourselves obscured hello world, right? So as you can see, this is already some sort of like obscured hello world, right? Because you don't have a hello world message directly anywhere in the code, right? So, but it's not really obscure enough, I would say. It is not really obscure enough. So, how can we obscure it even more? Let's run the original program. Okay, to obscure this even further, we need to notice that the table is actually rather small. It's 10 characters, right? It's 10 bytes. 
So the size of 64-bit integer is in fact 8 bytes, right? So that means if we shave off like 2 extra bytes, we can fit the entire table into 64-bit integer. And in fact, we do have some extra characters that are not really important for the message, right? So one of the things we can do, in fact, we can just remove a comma and exclamation mark. And uh, that changes everything. So you get essentially a table that is eight characters. So one thing we can do in here, in fact, is to take the pointer to the table and straight up reinterpret it as a 64-bit integer. So let's actually try to do that. Uh, so I can do something like, let's call it table, uh, table 64, right? So this is going to be table 64. And as far as I know, yeah, like C has this stupid system where like you have to use P or I uh, U64 macros or something like that because on different in different environments um, you know U int uh, 64 or whatnot is actually different so in, in some cases it's like LL LLU uh, and in some compilers it is not like I, I don't know you, you have to use this kind of thing um, right and then uh, we'll try to take the table which will give us the pointer to this entire thing we know that the size of the table is 8 we can straight up reinterpret the pointer to it to a pointer to 64 bit uh, number right and just dereference it so we, we're doing a little bit of like a type pa uh, pa how is it called type pawning yeah type uh, type pawning there we go and that's what we're doing so uh have multiple issues well yeah using type punning is already an issue but anyway i'm gonna put that in the description for anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff right so uh type a punning there we go um so and let's see if we've got the number okay so it's located somewhere in int types as far as i know int type s uh there we go so here's the number uh, this is a pretty huge number and it will be a little bit easier to work with this number if it was in hexadecimal So let's actually do something like I think you have to put X in here. I think that's how it works Yeah, there we go. So I also want to capitalize that because capitalized looks cooler, right? Because they have the same height and then I want to put like 0x in front of them to indicate that it's in hexadecimal. There we go, we've got a number. Uh, what's cool about a hexadecimal is that you can see each individual byte. Two digits in hexadecimal correspond to the bytes, right? So when you have uh, 16 characters divided by 2, you get 18, right? And uh, so essentially 20, there we go, isn't 20 basically 32 in... Uh, in yeah, it's, it's 32, and 32, according to ASCII, uh, is a space. There we go. Right, 32, 32 is a space. Right, you can clearly see the characters. If you if you take that number and can uh, like represent it in hexadecimal, each individual pair of uh, digits in here is the character. So this is literally the table that fits into 64-bit uh, register of the CPU. So you can already make it a little bit more obscure, right? So let's go back to our hello example, right? And instead of table, let's actually just like use, uh, you know, uint 64t and here we're going to do std int, right? And how do you look up within that table, right? You cannot just look it up uh, with indices. You have to use the index as sort of uh, a hint how much you have to shift. To shift uh, by one uh, byte, right, you have to shift it by 8 bits, right? And ADX, uh, ADX I is basically how many bytes you have to shift, right? You shift to the right uh, this amount of bytes, and then you have to apply the mask to extract that byte, essentially, like this. Right, and um, of course, this is a com uh, completely different table, and uh, because of that, we'll have to update the indices, as you can see. Yeah, so the indices are completely different, right? So we need to update the indices here as well. So this is a different, different situation. Uh, all right, so there we go. Um, so essentially, yeah, by shifting this amount of bits let's imagine that you want to um, access this character 
right? You, you want to access this character. You want to shift to the right one byte, removing this thing, and you want to shift to the right another byte. And there you go. And now you want to remove everything in front of that byte. And because of that, you need to apply the mask um, that looks like this, right? You need to apply this mask, which will effectively erase everything uh, in here, like so. And you will be left with 57, which is the character that you want to actually print. So this is how basically this magic works in here, right? So this is basically how it does. Uh, and I guess that is it, right? So if I try to recompile my hello world example, right? Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. It prints hello. It prints hello world without comma and exclamation mark. And it's already even more obscure than, than it was before. It doesn't even contain any characters anymore, right? So we're getting more and more obscured. So we need to think how else we can obscure it, right? You can notice a very interesting thing. Uh, the maximum value of uh, an index in here is 7. Right, if we take the numbers uh, from 0, uh, emax, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, right, and actually convert all of them to binary. So let's actually do a little bit of a binary counting on them. So this is going to be 0, 1, uh, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, uh, 1, um, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, so essentially, um, one single index, one single index takes up to three bits. So, and what's interesting is that for the indices in here, we're using size T, which is 64 bit on 64 bit architecture. So there's a lot of waste in here. One of the things we can do essentially, uh, we can uh, take all, all our all indices and compress them into sequences of uh, indices of size three. And I just realized that in this thread on Twitter, I made a huge mistake actually. <laughs> So because somebody asked me how this entire thing works and I actually summarized uh, how it works like in a few words uh, some way here. Um, I wish I could find that Twitter is actually very confusing. Um, I never use Twitter seriously. I'm sorry, I'm just shit posting there. Uh, okay, so what I said in here is that it's a sequence of four, four bit indices. And I just realized as I went through my entire logic here that it is not true. It's actually three bit indices. So I really apologize for that. <laughs> so this explanation is wrong, by the way. This is not three, four bit indices. These are clearly, as you can see, three bit indices. So um, I'm really sorry. So I actually rushed uh, this explanation because uh, this entire thing was getting too much attention. So I was a little bit worried. So yeah, it's supposed to be like a three bit um, indices, right? And how many indices do we even have in there? Let's actually take a look. So we have uh, 11 words, right? You have 11 words and uh, where's my scratch buffer? Um, 11 multiplied by three uh, and that gives you 33 bits, which definitely fits into 64 bits. Right, so the entire sequence of indices here, right, the entire sequence of indices can be fit into 64-bit uh, integer and it's going to be even smaller than the table, right? Because the table takes all of the 64 bits, but the sequence of indices only needs um, 33 bits, right? So that's totally fine. <clears throat> all right, so let's try to go ahead and do that. Let's try to go ahead and do that. I suppose we want to come up with an integer, uh, which it will be easier to actually chop off the indices from the um, from the right, right? Essentially, so what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to do something like um, um, one, 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 right? And then after I'm done with that index, I want to just shift this entire thing by three, right? Shift it by three and do uh, one, one, one yet again, right? That's what I want to do. Uh, so that means I need to start pushing the indices backwards, I suppose, right? So because um, um, because of how bit operations work, you can only 
push to the right and pop from the right. Right, so that means I need to iterate the indices from the right and essentially push them. So the next the next time I access them, I'm going to be accessing them from left to right, if that makes any sense. Let's actually go ahead and implement that and see how it will go. Uh, all right, so I'm going to have something like um, indices. Right, so this is going to be, let's call it IDX64, right? So we have a table 64 and we also have IDX64. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be iterating the uh, indices, right? So it's going to be IDX size. Um, and again, I need to iterate that from the start, but maybe it doesn't matter because at any point you can quite easily flip the entire I by doing something like IDX size uh, minus i minus one and that gives you basically the value from the end and what i can do in here is essentially i can do idx 64 i can shift it to the right leaving a little bit of space for the next thing and then i can i can do or uh, between those things and this is how i'm going to be collecting um, all of the indices this is how i'm going to be packing all of them right so and after that i think i'm ready to just print this entire thing um let's actually put this stuff somewhere here right so i want to pre-calculate everything and then i want to print everything um so this is going to be idx 64 0x uh, pri x 64 uh, and let's just print this entire thing. Okay, so this gave us this number. Um, so I wonder if it's going to work, right? Let's just go ahead and grab this number and go to hello. Right, so int uh, 64, right, int 64. Uh, and this is basically ID, oh my god, I actually print, uh, pressed insert IDX, there we go. So what's interesting is that um, we can keep doing that uh, until ADX is not equal to zero, because once it's equal to zero, we basically exhausted all of the characters. So that way we don't even need to know how many, um, how many indices we have in there. So we can do something like while IDX um, and in C, zero is automatically false so we can just do while idx um, we're gonna essentially grab the first index right so in the first uh, to grab the index one 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 is essentially seven so what we have to do we have to put seven in here right uh, and that give us the index which we then can use right which we then can use to extract this entire stuff so essentially we can just put it like that all right, and I think I did a little bit of a uh, fucky wacky and oopsie doopsie. And after that, what I need to do, I just need to shift this entire thing by three, I suppose. All right, I need to shift it by three and let me see what's going to happen. Uh, all right, so I'm going to do hello world and it printed hello world. Right, there we go. So it actually works. I can try to break something. I can replace uh, one with 69, right? And if I try to run it, uh, as you can see, something went horribly wrong. So one uh, of the characters were corrupted, right? And if I change something like in here, so this is going to be nine. Uh, yeah, we have we have double double w so this is not what we want to have in here right essentially here is the hello world so we can start obscuring that even further right uh, for instance one of the things i did in the original shed post is that i inlined oh my god it we're so slow i inlined the process of shifting to make it even more scarier right so everything else is just basically making it more and more scarier uh, right, so this is going to be like that. But what's interesting is that this process will return you the new value, right? This process returns the new value and because of that, it doesn't really look great, uh, right? And you basically lose one of the characters. So the idea is basically to put an extra zero uh, that you can sacrifice. Um, but I wonder how you can do that. I think somewhere in the indices right after i finished computing the indices i can try to push uh, idx 
Uh, maybe I can try to push it at the beginning. All right, so ADX, ADX as Z plus plus. I push right away some sort of a zero, which we can essentially sacrifice. Uh, right, and if I try to run this entire thing, um, let me see. I can go to my hello. As you can see, I don't compute anything myself, right? I just wrote uh, an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary program that basically does that, all of that for me. I only have to modify some parameters and the final result is here, right? I don't even have to like think about it too much, right? Automation, okay. So we have an extra index in there that this entire thing will eat up. And uh, I suppose now we can try to run it uh, yet again. And there we go, so this is the hello world. Right, we can try to keep obscuring this entire stuff. Uh, and what's interesting is that multiplying by eight, right? Multiplying by eight is rather interesting because multiplying by eight is essentially uh, uh, the same as multi uh, multiply by two, then multiply by two, and then multiply by two, like three times, right? So the first one is gonna be four, and then another one is gonna be eight. What's interesting is that when you multiply something by two, it's equivalent of shifting to the left by one bit, right? You're shifting to the left by one bit. And since we do that three times, I need to only shift three times. There we go. So that's basically what we have in here. So we have an extra parenthesis that are kind of dumb, but I suppose that's fine, right? I suppose that's fine. So if we try to run the hello, it still works. Look at that. It still in fact works. Um, and I guess that's the all obscurity that we did in here. What's interesting is that um, somehow I made a mistake and uh, here I'm actually moving by four, but in fact, I have to move by three and I'm using a really weird mask. So the reason why it looks like that, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know how I came up with this thing because when I follow my entire thought process, uh, clearly this four, oh my God, I actually accidentally make it like this. Clearly this four has to be three and clearly this mask has to be seven. You see, like there is a huge difference between what I tweeted and what I have in here. So, and I, I have no idea why this thing even works because there's so many mistakes in here and there's so much misunderstanding. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was my entire thought process. Somehow I screwed it up and somehow it still works. But what I wanted to do, in fact, I wanted to do that, right? That's what I meant in here. Uh, of course, you can obscure it even further by inlining the table, right? So we can inline it like this. Uh, so, and uh, IDX, I might, might as well actually call it something like DX, right? I didn't want to call it IDX in the final example because that will give away that it's a table of indices. So I just dec decided to call it DX, uh, right? So it doesn't give away that it's a you know, table of indices or something like that. So it feels like maybe there are some extra parentheses that are not really needed in here, but who knows? Oh, okay, so here is the extra parentheses. So I don't think the exact, um, you know, parameters here matter, right? What matter is the trail of thoughts, right? So this was my trail of thoughts, and this is how I roughly came up with this entire thing. I still have no idea how I screwed it up to the point that I put completely wrong things in here and it still worked. You know, as it always is, how to say that? As it always is, in software development, everything works accidentally. And this is no exception. So yeah, I'm gonna put this entire thing, um, I don't know, so maybe this thing in the description. So I'm gonna upload it to GIST uh, if you wanna play with it. Um, so yeah, that was my entire thought process. Um, hope it was useful, hope it was interesting. And I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Love you. Mm -hmm.